It's evening. A guy in a coat and a hat is standing in front of the splendid cinema's window, lit up by colored bulbs. He is looking at the repertoire, peering inside through the door. He may seem hesitant to go inside. Or maybe he is waiting for someone? After a moment, however, he gives up, and with some regret in his eyes, walks away. Let's start with a scene like this. This is what the director of the TV series The Career of Nikodem Dyzma, Jan Rybkowski, might have thought, because this is how one of Poland's most iconic series begins. The splendid cinema was in fact located at the address Moniuszki 1, and the mysterious type, as we later learn, Nikodem Dyzma, who cannot afford a ticket to the cinema, walks away towards Piotrkowska Street. He will still return to this area, but by then he will probably be able to afford not only a ticket, but perhaps also to buy out the entire splendid cinema. Because Nikodem Dyzma, at the peak of his career, will be appointed director of the Grain Bank, and the bank's building will play the role of the building at the junction of Piotrkowska and Moniuszki streets, the former seat of the Ludwig Geyer Cotton Products Joint Stock Company. Moniuszki Street in general has a very interesting history, including its film history. In the second half of the 19th century, this land belonged to the Wrocław-born manufacturer Ludwig Meyer. He made his mark on the city architectural history in a special way. Thanks to a widespread rumor that the capital of the gubernia was to be moved from Piotrków to Łódź, he came up with a clever plan to create a passageway partially close to the traffic, which would be nothing more than a private street. Luxury villas intended for Tsarist officials and dignitaries were to be built along this street. However, the promotion of the city did not materialize, and the developer himself was left with a huge loans to repay, so he desperately sought tenants. The passage, named the Mayer Passage after its creator, was handed over to the city and lived to be known as the most beautiful street in Łódź. Mayer sold the corner plot in 1880s to the Ludwig Geyer Company. A magnificent bank building was erected on it, the corner of which was accentuated by the quadrilateral tower with a cupola. And let's move to the world of fiction. On the stairs from Piotrkowska Street you can see Dyzma, Roman Wilhelmi, living in the company of his irreplaceable assistant Krzepicki, Jerzy Bończak. Dyzma's road to the job was exceptionally winding, and although it is hard to like the protagonist who follows it, he inspires a great deal of admiration with his ability to keep his nerves in check, which allows him to fall into yet another lie. The story is set in 1920s. We meet him as an unemployed Mr. Nobody who has virtually no skills, and his situation seems rather hopeless. However, a day comes that changes everything. By sheer coincidence, Dysma comes into possession of an invitation from the Prime Minister to a banquet at the Hotel Europa. Initially hesitant, he finally decides to take the risk and, dressed in his best outfit, turns up at the appointed time for the party. He knows what hunger is, so he almost throws himself at the tables laden with food. However, before the first bite reaches his mouth, he hurriedly passing Prime Minister's office chief Jan Terkowski, played by Mariusz Dmochowski, accidentally knocks the plate out of Dysma's hands. Dysma is furious and makes a ruckus with Terkowski, which draws the attention of all the guests. Among them are the very cream of the political crop, businessmen and aristocracy. The usurper gains recognition among Terkowski's opponents. Although Dysma initially feels lost in the whole situation, some sixth sense tells him to continue playing his part. And so he plays, eventually becoming rich, famous and prominent. The script for the series is based on 1931 novel by one of the most widely read writers of the interwar period, Tadeusz Dołęga-Mostowicz. His prose contains many qualities that make for a great screenplay, clarity of plot, logical dramaturgy and, above all, expressive characters. Career of Nikodem Dyzma brought him real fame. The novel is associated with a turning point in the writer's life. Dołęga Mostowicz openly criticized the Sanation government. Working as a journalist at the time, he wrote a column in which he suggested that the disappearance in unexplained circumstances of a certain general, an opponent of the government, could be a kidnapping for political reasons. 
On September 8, 1927, Doenga Mostovic was abducted and brutally beaten. It was widely commented that career of Nikodem Dizma was a kind of revenge on Piłsudski. The book was supposed to discredit people in power and political and social systems and show the mechanism that allow mediocrities and imposters to occupy lucrative positions. The story of Dizma was perfect for a film script. The seventh episode series was director Jan Rybkowski's second approach to this novel. Back in 1956, he made a cinema version starring Adolf Dimsha. From this perspective, the series becomes not only a new adaptation, but also a remake. An unforgettable performance on the set was created by Roman Wilhelmi. The outstanding actor was accompanied by the biggest stars of Polish cinema at the time. Some of the lines from career of Nikodem Dysma have entered common usage, which is one of the indicators of the series' cult status. The story can be closed with Dysma's text from a meeting at the Council of Ministers. What I had to say, I have read. The neighborhood in which we are located is a very filming place. For example, the gateway passage at Moniuszko at number 1A is the set of Michał Kwieciński and Michał Rosa's 2016 series Bodo. The sunny Moniuszko street pretends to be Warsaw, where Bodo, Antoni Królikowski, takes his first steps in the capital. Moniuszko Street was also the setting for what is probably the most famous funeral scene in Polish cinematography, that of Buchholz in Andrzej Wajda's Promised Land, 1974. The funeral procession passes through here and Moritz convinces his friends of the superiority of the Catholic Church over the Evangelical Church. At number two used to be one of the most famous meeting places for the city's artistic bohemians, the Honoratka Cafe. Run by a married couple, Stefania and Bolesław Bruzdziński, the cafe was famous for its homemade cakes, which were supplied by society ladies earning their pensions. Krystyna Janda recalled that there was the only Italian espresso machine east of the Elbe and that every Honoratka regular remembers the cheesecake with whipped cream. It was a somewhat snobbish place. Frequenting this cafe confirmed that one belonged to the community. And among the cafe's clientele, the very cream of the artistic and intellectual cream, lawyers, writers, artists, and of course, filmmakers. <laughs>